All I guess to think of Christ, you know. God. Think about Jesus. At the Easter time, when he's uh, arisen. Pretty much church on Sundays. Christianity, um, Jesus dying on the cross, the resurrection. Help. Help? How so? Red cross. It's a form of architectural support. So any number of different things, but usually a cross, especially with any religious overtones at all, relates directly to Jesus. I want to share with you a vision that I believe the Lord gave to me on the 21st day of October 2007. As was my custom on that Sunday morning, I was on my way to church just as it was breaking day. But there was a special reason to come that day. Our people were out on our property praying and asking God to bless the building of some buildings that would add to our campus, a new worship facility and a place to study God's Word. I always came down the feeder road under Beltway 8. But as I approached Beltway 8 from 45 South, I decided that morning to go up over the overpass. I'd never done that before. As I approached the campus and I looked out where the building was to be built, I had a vision of a cross, a big cross that would lift up into the sky. I came into my office before the services started. I called two of my staff people to come to my office that I could share with them what I had just visualized. I asked them to pray about it. The next few days, I shared it with our deacons and then all of our church leaders and our entire church. I asked the church to join me in praying that God would allow us to build a cross on the property before we built our buildings. That this cross would be high enough and large enough that it could not be ignored. People might reject it, or they could accept it, but they could not ignore it. And it would be a constant reminder to the thousands of people that travel that freeway every day of the love of God, and that God loves them unconditionally. We began to get very excited about the possibilities. The architects were called, the contractor was secured, and the vision has become a reality. Well, about eight months ago, we were in a vision team meeting discussing the details of the sanctuary and Sunday school space that we're in the development of. And uh, Brother John came in with a concept about uh, having a cross on our facility. We have people from finance background, from uh, architecture, from construction, from uh, marketing and sales, any and all of those type of sectors. And uh, it's real good to hear comments because as you know, everybody has an opinion and somebody usually brings up something that you hadn't thought about. But all in all, we came to a unanimous de decision that it was a, a great opportunity for us. And so we started talking about the, the concept and location and size and shape and things like that. And uh, shortly after they uh, requested that my firm get involved to uh, to take care of the project and get it uh, get it installed, bring it to completion. So we started on on that uh, that concept. I think we got uh, I think we got everything we need. Looks like it's going to be a good day. Shouldn't have any problems. So uh, let's uh, let's ask the Lord to bless our time here, and bless today, keep it safe, and let's go to work. Okay. Well, Father, again, we thank you for another beautiful morning, another opportunity to uh, serve you and to do what to, uh, you train us to do. We pray your blessings on each one of these men. Let them have a good, productive day in Christ's name. Amen. Okay. Let's go to work.
this was an existing reflecting pond and we decided that this was going to be the, the best location for the cross, so we placed it here. We had to pour a seal slab in and then reinforcings put in on top of the seal slab to build this 28 by 32 foot uh, square, six foot thick spread footing that they're forming up right now. Within this spread footing is a cluster of anchor bolts that you see sticking up out of it now, and that's what they're uh, setting into place and anchoring them down. And this will be the base for the steel structure eventually. The steel cross structure will be bolted to where that top plate and all those nuts are on the bolts right now. So all of this will be under, under dirt or under water when, it's, uh, when the whole thing is finished and you won't be able to see any of this. This is all the prep work, the foundation that uh, supports everything. I want to thank the Lord for having you all out here and having a nice beautiful sunny day and everything that you all are doing with the efforts that you have to make this a successful project. So if you don't mind, let's, let's, let's go to the Lord for a minute. Father, we're grateful for the beautiful day that you've given us. Since I am on site a lot, I have the opportunity to be here while the guys are working and also after everybody's gone. And I take those opportunities to, to pray and I pray for a lot of different things. When I'm here and nobody else is here, then I'm, I'm praying the Lord to consecrate the ground and to, uh, to witness to the people that may not be involved in this project at all, uh, the people that may have opposition to this project, uh, really, it's whatever whatever comes to mind. I the need. I lift up Paragon to the Lord. We need some help there and, and make a schedule. Where's the anchor bolt? We have been in business for 30 years, and, and uh, we work on a lot of different type of projects. We do a lot of industrial and commercial work. Uh, every once in a while, we're blessed to be able to work on a church. We're working on a number of churches right now, Baptist churches, but uh, we never have done a cross of this size. I think one of the crosses that uh, Brother John saw when he was traveling that kind of birthed this, this concept was a cross that was uh, designed and installed by uh, a company called Hedrick Sign out of uh, Laurel, Mississippi. These are the blessed people, uh, Christians, really, really fine people to deal with. So we got involved with them and talked to them about the concept and they helped us with uh, developing that. It is a, uh, an eight foot square steel box structure, 170 foot tall. The cross arm is 60 foot span. And uh, the cross will be in five sections. About 98 tons of steel in the cross structure itself. There's approximately uh, 300 yards of concrete. It's not, uh, not a whole bunch of concrete for the, for the structure, but it's concentrating in, in, in the right place. And uh, the anchor bolts that you see behind us, uh, that anchor bolt cluster, they're two and a half inch diameter anchor bolts, 10 foot long, and there's about 3,000 pounds of anchor bolts there. So uh, it takes a lot to hold up this, this structure with the, the wind loads on it and everything. You had them on the 45, and they need to go on the vertical. Yes, sir. So let's see, okay, in these four places. Yes, sir. Yeah. The main cross structure and the foundation for the cross was a uh, cornerstone engineering design and then DMAR Engineering did the rest of the foundation around it, the amphitheater, the platform, uh, the electrical, all the other elements that are involved in the project to bring it to what will be completion. And there's going to be an amphitheater and it's, uh, it's gonna be able to have about 250, 300 people seating on it where we can have preaching sessions, we can have baptisms, weddings, uh, concerts, youth groups can uh, come out here and make as much noise as they want without uh, bothering anybody. There's a lot of things we can do with it. So uh, that was one of the things we wanted to make it real flexible for a lot of different functions. The one thing that I keep thinking about is everybody is in a different frame of mind, but everybody that comes down this freeway is gonna see this cross. They're gonna have a hard time missing it. So they may not even notice it for months and months to any great extent, but hopefully at the time that they need the Lord to speak to them and they need the Holy Spirit to deal with an issue in their life, they'll be driving by this cross and they'll see it and they'll realize maybe I need to, to go to a higher power to help me 
resolve my problems. This, I think, is, is the biggest uh, benefit of, of this project. When we receive the piece, it comes in from the fabricator. The first thing we do is uh, we'll do a visual check on it. We'll check for damage, uh, uh, any areas of the fabrication that needs more grinding. We'll do a final inspection on it. Uh, after it's scheduled, we go into blast. Uh, we put it in a uh, blast booth. Uh, a steel grit booth. We'll do a sandblast on it. Uh, we sandblast for whatever the specification calls for. If we blast it too hard, then we have uh, parts of the steel sticking out of the paint. If we don't blast it enough, then we've got not enough, uh, we got the coating falling off. So it's real important that we get one, the surface preparation, the cleanliness level down, and also the roughness of the steel uh, so the, for the proper coating. These particular pieces, I think the heaviest piece weighs about 50,000 pounds. The big cross arm piece, uh, the one behind me, I don't think it weighs that much, maybe 30,000. We got the welding we were looking for. They got the spacing on the weld. Once it comes in, it takes about a week to, uh, to turn it around. It, it takes, uh, it's a three coat system. It's a epoxy primer, it's an epoxy uh, intermediate coat, and a polyurethane top coat. Polyurethane gives it its UV resistance. Uh, keeps it shiny, looking nice for years to come. Life expectancy of the coating should be about 15 to 20 years. And then at that point, then we need to look at it and decide maybe it needs a washing from, you know, right there on Bellway 8, it's gonna see a lot of road grime and a lot of dirt and a lot of exhaust. At some point in time, it's gonna need some freshen up. All in all, boy, it looks great. Y'all have done a great job. Your family really went above and beyond on this one, John. We sure appreciate it. Thanks. We have been in the pipe coating business, or I started it in 1966, and that's about 43 years ago. Uh, work on chemical plant piping, refinery piping, uh, oil field piping. We got involved in building the cross because we thought it was a great idea. You know, they put billboards on all the major freeways, and this is a major freeway and we're putting a cross on a major freeway, and that's obviously going to be seen by probably a couple hundred thousand people a day, and we wanted to be part of the project. Sagemont did not ask anything. We just saw the need and volunteered like most of the other people in Sagemont. For the need, they see a need, and they, they do the need. We work so much, we don't uh, have time to go on uh, a lot of the ministries that Sagemont does, so we can, uh, we can do this for them. I think for me, just uh, besides the fact of, of what the cross means to all of us as Christians, uh, it's a big cross and you know, we've got a big God. And uh, just, I, I think, is a, a daily reminder to all of us. Uh, for me personally, my drive in every morning is kind of my quiet time. And uh, just when I come over 45 and, and, and see the cross, it's just another reminder of, uh, of where I need to be every day, you know, it's just looking up to the cross. Father, thank you for this day. We've looked forward to it for so long. Bless every man. Uh, keep them safe. Bless this project now as we see it coming into fruition and completion, and we lift it to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you all again. Number 66. 66. This morning we received the uh, first two sections of uh, the cross. We erected the first section, the base section, and it went on just right. We had to get it leveled up and adjust it, make sure it was plumb. And once that was done, then we got it all bolted down and got it tied down real tight so we could erect the second section. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple. It's a little bit time consuming with uh, you know as many bolts has got to be uh, tightened up on this uh, cross joining the sections together but uh, uh, it, it's a pretty simple operation and it, it, it ought to go pretty smooth.
now that we're finally out of the ground and we're starting to do something that people can recognize, that the excitement level is a lot higher, obviously, and the anticipation of the cross standing is, is uh, really elevated. So uh, it's, it's really great to get to this point to see it come to fruition. We'll get this thing standing, then we'll get the landscape phase finished, and uh, the site will be dressed up, and Laurel will rain on it and shine on it and uh, grow it, and we'll have to cut the grass, and next thing you know, we'll be out here at Easter time having a service, so it'll be great. The whole reason for the project uh, to begin with was uh, to be a, uh, a witness for people driving up and down the road. There's uh, so many people, you know, just regular everyday folk. There's, you know, there's businessmen and there's school kids and there's uh, laborers and, you know, white collar people and there's nurses and sick people, you know, there are legals and, and uh, aliens trying to get in. All of those people are driving up and down the road seeing this every day, but they are equal at the foot of the cross. And to be able to be able to come over here and do business with God one on one and not have anybody bother you. Uh, it, it, it's just an excitement level to, to know that you are a part of having that opportunity to do that. The cross is a symbol that a lot of people see, recognize, you know, will talk about, but uh, after you start getting to an in-depth conversation with them, you realize they don't really know what it was about. They don't know the sacrifice that was offered up on that cross, that if they were the only person on this earth, that Christ would have died on that cross for them, and uh, that he loves them that much. In John 12, 32, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And I think what he was saying is, if you'll just get people to look to me, I can do things for people that no one else can do. And what I do will last for an eternity. Nothing takes the place of salvation. That's an eternal thing. And so we have an opportunity, I think, to reach out, or reach up maybe I should say, and see the hand of God wanting to touch people's lives for eternity and remind them how special they are. So I'm excited. Uh, I think our church is excited. And I think that our community and our city will be excited when they truly understand what this is all about. It has got a real fine paint system on it. So we may have to clean it, may have to do some, you know, some power washing or something, but uh, uh, painting wise, we shouldn't have to mess with it for a while. It's, it's, been a, it's been a real uh, labor of love, I'll have to say, for, uh, uh, for the time I've been involved in this project. But I think the, the thing that's probably affected me more than anything else is just to realize the, the magnitude of people that are gonna be exposed to it. Well, emotionally, it's certainly the most exciting thing that I've ever been a part of. The children's building, was a fabulous experience, knowing that we were going to invest in the lives of children. And then yesterday, being out here and looking at the children sitting in this yard, coming out of that building and watching the cross, my prayer is that they'll always want to see the cross and look for the cross when they come to church. Here is a letter that was in the local paper this week. I want to commend Sagemont Church for the construction of the beautiful, inspiring cross. Such a beautiful contribution to our community. I heard some criticism via television with complaints. They should have given the money they paid for its construction to the poor. It reminds me of the complaint of Judas when Mary poured the expensive jar of alabaster ointment on Jesus to anoint him. 
And Judas said, why wasn't this ointment sold and the money given to the poor? And Jesus said, the poor you're already, always going to have with you. And for the information of the critics, Sagemont Church, this writer says, has given very well to the poor. I'm not a member of this church. But when our house and everything we own was destroyed in a fire in 2006, me and my family were devastated. But this church tracked us down, found us in a motel, gave us $500 for immediate expenses, and later, when we had trouble rebuilding, they paid two mortgage payments for us. Criticism should be aimed at the negative and destructive influences in our community, not at a symbol that represents the ultimate love and forgiveness of God. Thank God we still have freedom of religion, not freedom from religion, and at least for this moment, freedom of speech and expression. A great big thank you to Sagemont Church. You've proven yourself to be an expression of God's love to the, our community. We know the importance of giving to the community. Well. John 12, 1 tells us that, yes, we will have those folks with us, but it is important that we glorify the Lord. There is the importance of what we do for one another and the importance of what we do for God. What we do for one another is temporal, but what we do for God is eternal. Jesus didn't come just to feed the poor. He could have sent somebody to feed the poor. Jesus came to seek and to save those which are lost. This is our opportunity. When we have a nation that's struggling and going through difficult times, there is one that is a solid rock. He does not change. He promises to those worried about the economy, I will supply your every need according to my riches and glory. He says to those that are looking for truth, I am truth. And if you come to the truth and you know the truth, the truth will set you free. We do not, we do not want people to think we're cramming religion down their throat. That's the furthest thing from our mind. That won't help anybody. It's not about religion. It's about a relationship with a living, crucified, but now resurrected Lord Jesus. Jesus didn't end it on the cross. He went from the cross to the tomb, and on the third day, he rose from the grave, and he now sits at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for whosoever will, will come to the cross. That's the message that I want to share with you tonight. You're welcome at the cross. I want to invite every single person in sound of my voice to look and live. God said in the Old Testament, you remember out there in the desert with Moses, he said with the serpent on the cross, if they'll just look, they can live. Because even as the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And if I be lifted up, Jesus said, I will draw all men unto me. I will baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The purpose of the cross was just to remind the people of Houston of how much God loves them. And whether traveling by automobile or landing on the runway at Hobby Airport, one could look out the windows of their car or out of the windows of the plane and see 170 feet in the air a cross. The cross that represented the love of God who gave his only begotten son to die that whosoever will might be saved. Tower Paradigm November 511 Papa Hotel, we're with you for arrival. Right, I'm one Papa Hotel, safe positions, clock 0215. Paradigm right, one Papa Hotel, 0215, we're approaching the cross. Southwest 2718, clear, land for. Land, southwest 232. Paradigm one Papa Hotel, roger, confirm the cross in sight. Paradigm one Papa Hotel, confirm, we're at the cross.
This is so exciting and I can't, I can't imagine what it's going to do to our city. I'm just pleased. I'm glad that Jesus is going to be lifted up like this. Well, I feel kind of proud to, you know, to have something to do with it, you know what I mean? So I can come by with my kids, you know, put them in the car, bring them and show them, you know, what I've been working on. And there are very few people that ever built a 170-foot cross. I like it at night, I'll tell you that. It's really neat at night. Him and my daughter, they like when we go over the, you know, freeway, you can see it, so. It's really cool to see. I like it, <laughs> right? <laughs> I was driving with my wife and we got excited about it. We said, good, it's nice to see positive things for a change. I'll look at it from a different perspective from the people going down the highway. I'll look at it and say, that's the job we did. I can be proud of it. Uh, as far as the symbolism, it's still a symbol of Christianity. You know, it'll never change on that. I like it. It's very, uh, very tall. It's big. <laughs> Biggest walk across I ever saw in my life. <laughs> I think it's a good idea. I really do. It makes me smile. It makes you think uh, of the man above. It's nice because to us the cross means and represents everything that Jesus did for us. It shows that this community is built on um, goodness, kindness. I think it's very important to me. I mean, it's, it's a cross, and I think it, we're going to be on history. Well, I think there's going to be a lot of reflection on what it stands for, and also maybe questions. And I hope that they feel free to come in and consider us an approachable church. Steve, John just called, and he really wants to thank you for the hard work that you've done, and the cross looks beautiful, but he, he was wondering if you could maybe just move it just a few degrees back this way. Is that any problem? <laughs> we'll start working on it right now. That's very good. good enough. It may take a couple of weeks, though. Just a couple of weeks? Yeah. Bet, not, bet, not far, just a few degrees just okay. this way. How about we just tilt it? <laughs> just, just tilt it, all right. Well, it, uh, I think it looks real good where it is. I don't want to leave it here. <laughs>